Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I will talk about everything that happened recently in the association and everything that is going to happen in the next couple of days. And we had a very exciting weekend of WNBA action and there was only one major storyline which I am choosing to cover right now. That storyline is Street Busters because as of right now, all of the winning streaks have ended. There were multiple teams with three games or more winning streaks, and they're, they're all gone. The, the Liberty had a winning streak that ended. The Lynx, their amazing winning streak ended. The Mystics had a winning streak, which is now over. So many winning streaks just gone down the toilet. Right now, the longest winning streak in the league, the longest active winning streak, is the Phoenix Mercury, who have won their last two in a row, and are still not in the playoffs yet. And then you've got the Atlanta Dream, who have, who have somehow, after an amazing start to the season, they have now dropped three in a row. And speaking of three in a row, the Minnesota Lynx suddenly find themselves in some real danger. They, after starting a WNBA record 13-0, 13 straight victories to open up the season, they lose two games in a row and end up dropping down to second place with the Los Angeles Sparks that they're now moving up to that number one seed for once. Minnesota has held on to that number one seed all season long. They have either been in sole possession of it or they've been tied for it. Now suddenly Los Angeles is in sole possession of that number one seed. And Minnesota is, finds themselves suddenly playing catch up. And since we're talking about streaks and undefeateds and stuff this week, let's just go ahead and mention a couple of things that are sticking out to me. There was not a single team that is undefeated or winless at home. Every team has at least one home win and one home loss. But there, are, there is one team, the Los Angeles Sparks, who have yet to lose a single road game. And in that same conference, you have the San Antonio Stars, who have yet to win a single road game. I told y'all that this was going to be a really fun season and the month of June is really shaping up to be a great one. There is still, I mean the Lynx, they are not out of the battle for, the set, for that number one seed. They are simply temporarily out of position. But the Sparks, they cannot feel comfortable at all because one little slip up and Minnesota is right back in it. But then again, now that LA has its first loss, Minnesota has dropped their first two, there is now less separation between that number one and two seed and the three and four seed. Then again, there's also even less separation between that three and four seed and that five and six seed. Because now suddenly you have three teams that only have eight losses and they're floating right around 500. You know, with the Mystics, with the Fever, with the Sky. Oh, and the Wings. I forgot the Wings. That's right, the black man forgot the Wings. Let's make a joke, people. As of right now, though, it's still a two-way race for first place and a two-way race for last place and then just a jumbled mess in the middle. So we'll stop to take a brief look at the current standings. And then I will mention briefly a couple of trades that happened. Phoenix involved in both of them. They look like they're definitely trying to shore up their roster, turn this thing around a little bit. They've got one of the best starting fives in the league, but one of the absolute worst benches. In fact, in their win on Sunday, they only had like eight points from their bench. So the Mercury, they signed Lindsey Harding, who had been waived by New York earlier this month. They traded with Noel Quinn to Seattle in order to get Angel Robinson. And some of the biggest news, they added Kelsey Bone, trading uh, multiple players and a draft pick to the Sun to bring her in. And that surprised me a little bit because Kelsey Boone is an amazing player and I can understand why Phoenix won her because she's a walking double-double and these past couple of years she's really shown what a force she can be in that paint. She enforces her will in the post and she makes any team automatically better. She is a strong presence on the floor, which is why I'm somewhat shocked that Connecticut got rid of her. Like, I don't understand what goes on in the WNBA locker rooms. Like, everything I know is what the media is willing to show us. Like, I have to go seek out all this news. Like, no one's bringing any exclusive scoops to my doorstep, you know. But, 
you know, so for me, it looked like Kelsey Bowen was one of the central figures to the Connecticut rebuilding process. She is a huge anchor in the middle, and she is definitely a force to be reckoned with. So I'm a little surprised they were willing to let her go. Then again, they do have a lot of other options. They've got some good post players with Chene, you know, with Alyssa Thomas, you know, with John Quill Jones that they drafted. I think she's still on the team, though I haven't heard her name in a while. I'll have to check on that. And so with all that stuff out of the way, we move on to the games that are being played this week. As always, I will tell you which ones are currently scheduled to air nationally, which means everyone in the U.S. can watch these. For anyone outside of the U.S. and all the other games that aren't being broadcast nationally, you can check your local listings or you can watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And don't forget that the times I say are Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to adjust for your time zone. On Tuesday, you've got two games that are being played at 9 p.m., one on ESPN2, another on ESPN3. You've got the Dream vs. the Sun and the Wings vs. the Sparks. And the Sparks, now that Minnesota has lost their first game and their second game, the Sparks, they're looking to hold on to that number one spot, so there's more pressure on them than ever before. Then on Wednesday, you've got a couple of very early games. You've got the Stars at the Mystics at 11.30 a.m. And then you've got the Fever at the Sky at 12.30. The Mystics are one of the worst home teams in the league. They have a very poor record playing in their own stadium. Though, they might be in some luck because they are facing the only team in the WNBA that has yet to win on the road. Though the key word there is also yet. And then at the night game, you've got the Liberty at the Lynx at 8 p.m. And the Liberty, they are in third place. There's still a bit of a separation, but if they can manage to get a win here, though it's hard for me to imagine Minnesota losing three in a row, if it does somehow manage to happen, you know, the Liberty are definitely closing that gap, inching closer and closer to the top spot. And then you finish out the game with the Sun at the Mercury at 10 p.m. Then on Thursday, we've got another early game, the Dream at the Sparks at 3.30 p.m. And then we finish out the week with the Wings at the Storm at 10 p.m. So that's all for me today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that other bullshit. There will be another new episode of WNBA Weekly on Friday morning. But until then, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle, and I hope you enjoy your week.